Okay, so if there are no questions, let's thank the, the speaker. So the next participant is Amit Kumar. Yes, sir. I am present here, sir. And I hope I am audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Okay, sir. I am trying to share my screen, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you let me know if my screen is visible, sir? It is, it is. Okay, sir. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amit Kumar. I am a research scholar from Department of Economics, Andhra University. So, at the outset of my presentation, I would like to thank the organizers of International Conference on Computational Methods in Sciences and Engineering, which is conducted by the Department of Mathematics, Bitspilani, Hyderabad, to give me this wonderful opportunity to present my paper entitled Health Insurance Cost Predictor App using machine learning in this webinar. So here goes the introduction. So in developed country, they basically face two major problems when it comes to health insurance. The first one is the raising cost of health care and the second one is the growing number of uninsured. So the price of premium fluctuates based on the market demand. For instance, Aetna, which is a health insurance provider company. So it lowered their premiums in 2015 when compared to that of 2014 and then they increased it in 2016. So when it comes to determining customer premiums, health insurance companies face a difficult challenge. So thereby a company's future revenues are directly related to its product price and business volumes. So setting the right price is essential. So using big data analytics as well as machine learning, uh, we try to uh, improve, uh, the company tries to improve its financial stability while maintaining its competitive advantage. So here are the objectives of my research paper. So the first objective is to do the exploratory data analysis of the health insurance data set. Uh, the second objective is to use four machine learning algorithms on this health insurance data set and compare the performance uh, results of all the algorithms. Uh, the third, uh, third objective is to predict the cost of health insurance accurately, which will be based on the pe best performing algorithm. And finally, uh, I'm going to develop and launch a computer-based application on the cloud as well as on local computer, which could easily predict the uh, cost of health insurance. So the data set which I'm using for this uh, research purpose is downloaded from UCI machine, uh, machine learning repository. So here in this screen, we can see that there are totally seven attributes. The first one is the age, which is an integer value. The second one is the sex, which is a categorical value. And for male, I have coded it as one. And for female, I have coded it as zero. The third attribute is the BMI. Uh, BMI is the body mass index, which is calculated using the height as well as weight of a body of a, a body of a person. So it ideally ranges from 18.5 to 24.9. The next attribute is the children. Uh, the fifth attribute is the smoker. And it's a categorical value. If a person is a smoker, then it is coded as one. For non-smoker, it is coded as zero. The sixth attribute is the region. So the beneficiary is residential area in the US. So it's a categorical value. So for person residing in southwest part of US, it is coded as one. For southeast, it is coded as two. For northwest, it is coded as three. And for northeast, it is coded as four. So the seventh and the final variable is the dependent variable. It is charges. So it is individual medical cost built by health insurance. So based on all these six, uh, first six uh, variables, we are supposed to predict the charges. There is a medical cost of a health insurance. So here goes the workflow of this uh, research. So I have initially downloaded the data insurance cost data. And the next step is the, doing the data analysis. Uh, so in exploratory data analysis, we I have usually built the uh, correlation matrix between the dependent as well as the independent uh, variables. I have plotted uh, uh, the distribution uh, uh, function of uh, numerical variables. And then the data pre-processing is done in which uh, I have seen, I have found it, uh, whether uh, this data is having any missing values or any duplicate values. And accordingly, I have processed it. The next step is to divide the data set into two parts, that is training data set as well as the testing data set. And 80% of the testing uh, training data, uh, uh, data set is used for training training data set. Then it is fed to, uh, to the required model. And finally, the predictions is made uh, by this model using the testing data set. And it predicts the cost of the insurance. So I have used Python language as well as Jupyter, the ID which I have used in integrated development environment is Jupyter Notebook. So the library, libraries which I have used is as shown in this figure is in this screen. So the first library is the Pandas. So which is, which is used for data analysis, data manipulation, as well as cleaning of data. The next library is the NumPy. It is used for scientific computing. It stands for numerical Python. So it supports large matrices and multidimensional data. The third library is the scikit-learn machine. Uh, scikit-learn library, which is used for machine learning uh, algorithms such as regression clustering as well as, well as categorical kind of uh, problems. The next library is the matplotlib. So it is used to plot graphs, uh, pie charts, 
uh, histograms, scatter plots, uh, and the next library is statistical graphics. So it is also used to plot uh, graphs such as box plot, violin plots, uh, and the next library is the joblib. So it provides lightweighting pipelining in Python. So here we can see in this uh, screen that there are initially 1337 observations in this table as shown in this uh, table, and there are seven uh, variables, different variables. So in this uh, data there were since there were no null values as well as well as no duplicate values so there was no need of any pre-processing uh, doing uh, to be done on this data so it's a very clean data so the next thing which i have done is that i have built a correlation matrix between the dependent as well as the independent variables so here with this heat map we can see that uh, variables like age uh, bmi as well as smoker all these three variables are having good positive correlation with the target variable whereas variables such as sex uh, children as well as region, it is having less correlation with the target variable. So the exploratory data analysis of the numerical uh, uh, variables is as shown in figure 3 as well as 4. So here we can see the age distribution uh, of the people in this data set. So the people uh, are aged between 20 to 70 years and most of the people in this data set are from uh, age from uh, 20 to say 23 years. So so the so from figure 4 we can see I have plot a uh, bar diagram of uh, age as uh, against uh, charges. So here we can see that as age increases, the charges also get increased. So BMI. So BMI, as I already told, that it stands for body mass index, and it is used uh, to calculate. Uh, you know, it, it is calculated by using the height as well as weight of a person. So here uh, it it tells us whether a person is either underweight, overweight, or normal in its weight. So it is the normal range of it is 18.5 to 24.9. But in this normal distribution graph, you can see that most of the people in this data set, uh, they are having their BMI in and around 30. So we can interpret from this uh, diagram figure 5 that most of the person in this data set are overweight. So the next thing which I have done is that I have plotted BMI against uh, charges and we can see from figure 6 that as BMI increases, the charges of the health insurance cost also gets increased. So the plot of the charges we can see in this figure 7. So most of the people in this data set, they are paying around 10,000 US dollars. So distribution plots of categorical variables. So here we can see that uh, figure eight, it shows uh, there are equal number of male as well as uh, female in this data set. But when it comes to the charges paid by males, it is little bit higher. That is about 14,000 US dollar, which is shown in the figure nine. When, uh, when compared to that of the female, which is around 13,000 US dollar. So children is the next variable. So here in, in this data set, most of the people are having no children. That is zero children as shown in this figure 10. So blue color kind of um, bar. And uh, a, pl a plot has been plotted between the children as well as, ch as, well as charges. So here we can see that as uh, the number of children increases, the charges also gets little uh, with a very few uh, levels. So the next variable is a smoker. And here we can see that most of the people uh, from figure 12, we can see that most of the people in this data set are non-smoker. And, uh, and the plot of uh, smoker versus charges is shown in figure 13. And here we can see from this figure 13, that the smoker they are paying around 32,000 US dollar. That is a very uh, high kind of you know uh, charges when compared to that of a people who are non-smoker, which is around 8,000 US dollar. So the same fact is being substantiated from the figure 14. So here we can see that the, this blue color graph it extends till 70,000 US dollar, while this orange color kind of graph, which is uh, for non-smoker, it extends till about 40,000 US dollars. So the next variable is a region. So in in this figure 15, we can see that almost all uh, regions are equally distributed in this data set. But when it comes to the charges, uh, we see in the figure 16 that uh, people who are residing in the southeast part of the US, they are paying a little bit higher charges when compared to that of the uh, charges paid by the other regions. So as I have said earlier in the uh, workflow uh, uh, diagram that 80% of the data set is used for training, while 20% of the data set is used for catching data set. And the next uh, thing is that, after dividing the data set, I have used uh, these four machine learning algorithms, that is linear regression, support vector regression, random forest, as well as gradient boosting regression. So explaining uh, yeah, the nitty gritty of uh, these, all these four machine learning algorithms, it would be re really very much difficult for me due to the time constraint, but still I would like to give a little bit of mathematical intuition as well as geometrical in intuition of all these four machine learning algorithms. So linear regression, it basically explains the relationship between the dependent as well as the independent variable uh, given by straight line uh, equation y is equal to mx plus c where y is the dependent variable m is the slope x is the independent uh, variable sorry sorry, sorry uh, to interrupt uh, yes, you, have, you have left with two more minutes okay sir okay sir. so c is the you know uh, intercept so 
So the next step is to find the best straight line between the independent variable as well as the dependent variable. And here the linear regression, uh, it's the cost is the error in our predicted value. So the linear regression it tries to you know use mean squared error. So its goal is to minimize this cost as much as possible in order to fit the best fit line. And the equation of it is given as cost function is uh, MSC is equal to one upon n summation of i is equal to zero to n y minus m x i uh, plus c of whole square. So here we can see that. Uh, the cost function is dependent on the value of m as well as c and the value of m and c is estimated using the gradient descent algorithm. So it gives optimum values of m and c of the linear regression. So here we can see from this uh, two dimensional diagram that uh, it is spotted between the parameter m as well as the loss function and initially when the parameter m is high, the loss uh, sorry uh, is low, the loss function is very high. So uh, gradually after decreasing the value of m, we find a point where there is a global minimum point. Uh, whose uh, slope is equal to zero and at that point the minimum squared error is almost equal to zero. The same is being uh, depicted from this diagram, three dimensional diagram where M and C are the variables and MSC is uh, predicted based on these two variables. So it's a, this, is, this is the algorithm of uh, you know, the uh, gradient uh, descent where we uh, initialize the model with M is equal to zero, C is equal to zero and we keep the learning rate very small say about 0.01. So uh, further, we partial uh, we find the partial differentiation of the loss function with respect to slope and intercept. And then if we substitute the values of dm and dc, in this case, we will we'll get updated parameters of slope m and c. So for this, we will create a for loop in Python. Uh, and inside this for loop, we will try to reiterate the data using a linear regression model. And then we will constantly update the parameters. So here, the uh, formula of dm is given as minus 2 upon n, summation of i is equal to 0 to n, xi into y i minus y hat. So similarly, we can find the equation of DC and uh, in this we try to predict uh, the value of M as well as C uh, where the value of MSC is almost ideally equal to zero. So the next uh, regression is the support factor regression. So here in linear regression, we found that our aim is our aim was to minimize the error while in SVR, uh, it tries to find the best hyperplane in which there are maximum number of points. So the uh, equation of hyperplane is given as y is equal to WX plus B and its boundary line equation is given as WX plus B is equal to plus or minus epsilon. So uh, this it uh, the SVR it tries to find the best uh, fit lines as that WX plus B minus Y is less than or epsilon less than or equal to epsilon and Y minus WX plus B is less than or equal to epsilon. So here we can find that if the value of epsilon from this figure if, if it is more it is having higher tolerance for the errors. But if uh, the value of epsilon is very small say it is 0 0.5 then the, then it is having very lower tolerance for the error and mathematically it can be written as we need to minimize this. Uh, with respect to W comma B, uh, half of W uh, times sorry, sir. Sorry, Amit, your time is over. Actually, sir, are... okay, one one minute, sir. One second. Okay. Can you summarize, yeah. Okay, definitely, definitely. So I have ran all these machine learning algorithms, uh, and uh, I have compared the accuracy of all these models. Visually, we can see I have taken ten actual and predicted models, and we can see that linear regression and SVR it has not performed well. When but when it comes to gradient boosting regression, visually we can see that it has performed. Uh, outperform all the machine learning algorithms in this uh, study. So this is this fact is even being substantiated from the evaluating uh, the metrics of the evaluating models R square as well as M mean absolute error. So here we can see the gradient boosting uh, R square is highest that is about 82 percent and its mean absolute error is 2581. So the finally using the teak inter package uh, which creates the GUI uh, in the Jupyter notebook the my app it looked like this and I have also built the same app uh, uh, using the streamlit. Uh, which is an open source app uh, using the machine uh, Python code. We can find, you know, I, I have updated this. I have, uh, we can, you can see, I mean, uh, how this uh, app works. I would like to show a live demo of this app. So this is the app, uh, which, you know, basically it works on the cloud as well as, so uh, by clicking this link, uh, we can easily predict uh, the cost, uh, the insurance predict prediction of a particular person. So here, if I enter a, age of a particular person, whether he is male or female, the BMI values. And let's say the person is having one children and he's non-smoker and he belongs to the region, say Southeast, then this app, you know, it beautifully predicts the value is about 6,258. So finally coming to the conclusion, I would like to say, as the BMI number of children and age increases, the insurance charges also gets increased. The insurance charges for male is little bit more when compared to that of female. The attribute smoker, it has high correlation with the charges and the charges for smoker is more than that of the non-smoker. Finally, gradient boost since gradient boosting regressor, it has outperformed all the machine learning algorithm. I have used this uh, machine learning algorithm in order to develop and launch the app. 
and for future work sophisticated models like nature inspired and meta heuristic algorithms can be used to modify the parameters of machine learning so if if anyone is having any doubts so kindly let me know and uh, the hyperlink the link of this you know uh, cloud is given in this uh, ppt also so thank you everyone for your patience as well as your attention uh, thank you amit uh, any queries from the audience yeah i just have one query yeah uh so amit it's a nice presentation yes, so can we use a kind of karush kuntakar conditions to show the stability or maybe the non linearity of your problem uh sir actually this uh, machine learning algorithm even if the data is non linear in nature it handles it very good and if you need to you know improvise the uh, accuracy of this models we will need to hyper tune it by you know substituting the value of uh, c as well as gamma in the gradient boosting regression sir all right thank you yes sir thank you yeah okay amit uh, thank you thank so you. the next 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 candidate is next uh, participant is amit sharma amit yes present sir yeah 